Here we're going to figure out how to do a simple at-home soil test for determining soil composition, specifically with regards to earth building. Figuring out if your soil will make a wall like this. This test, also known as the jar test, by itself will not tell you if your soil is going to make a good adobe, but it will help you understand the composition of your soil and if your soil is likely or unlikely to be able to make a good stable earth mixture for construction. Step one is get yourself a decent sized jar. Make sure that it's clear and ideally has a lid. Step two is to fill that jar halfway to two thirds with the soil that you want to test. When you're collecting your soil, make sure that you're getting underneath any topsoil that might be on your property. Step three, fill with water. Step four is shake and shake and shake. Shake it until you're confident that all the particles are fully separated and soaked through. Now you just wait. It can take four to eight hours for all the particles in the soil to fully settle. In the meantime, let's look at some classic mistakes that people make when they're doing this kind of test. The first of which is filling the jar too full with dirt. You don't want to do this because if there's not enough water in the jar, then the different sized mineral particles aren't going to separate from each other. The next mistake is just putting too little dirt in the jar. This amount of dirt is less likely to be a reliable cross-section of your soil, and it's a lot harder to read. This is an example of a test with too much rock content. This may seem like a normal soil test, but it actually has a too high metal content. Okay, so here's our soil test after it's settled. So what are we looking at and what are we looking for? There's probably going to be three to five different layers of mineral size classification in your test. The largest particles will have sank to the bottom, and as you go higher up the test, the particles will get smaller and smaller. The aggregate are the largest particles, the rocks, gravel, and pebbles that are larger than grains of sand. It's okay to have some aggregate in your mix, and it's a great way to fill it out, but you don't want your mix to be mostly aggregate, and you don't want any aggregate larger than a half an inch, and ideally less than a quarter inch, and even more ideally, you would sift out all of the aggregate. This is because every large rock that is in your mixture is a disruption in the otherwise evenly distributed matrix of particles that you're going to be creating. A glitch in the matrix. And that weakens your overall construction. The aggregate isn't always clear, but you can usually identify it by little gaps in the sand and clay and silt that have kind of settled on the bottom around all of the rocks. Above the aggregate, the sand will have settled. You can identify what is sand and fine sand because if you look closely, you can actually make out the individual little granules of sand. For sand and light sand, you want at least as much as your silt and clay. That's at least 50% sand to 50% silt and clay. And ideally, you would have quite a bit more, say 60 to 70% sand to 40 or 30% silt and clay. Above the sand layer is the silt layer. Silt is between sand and clay in terms of particle size. You can tell where the silt layer is because you can still kind of make out little differences and color variations of the particles within the silt, but it's not quite as clearly defined as in the sand layers. It's also probably going to be darker than the clay layer. You want to make sure that there's not significantly more silt than clay in your mixture. Silt is not nearly as strong a bonding agent as clay and it's not as hydrophobic, and so if your mixture is being held together almost entirely by silt, it's going to be very weak. Finally on top is the star of the show who gets all the credit despite only doing 20% of the work, the clay layer. You can tell what is clay because it's solid, like custard. The particles are too small to distinguish with the human eye. So to summarize what kind of soil might make an acceptable stable earth mixture. It should not be mostly aggregate, and the aggregate should be no bigger than a half an inch, ideally less than a quarter of an inch, and ideally, ideally no aggregate at all. You want at least as much sand in your mix as silt and clay, but not more than 80%. Between the silt and the clay, there should be at least as much clay as there is silt, and not significantly more silt than there is clay. Now if your soil has these qualities, there's a good chance that it's acceptable for construction. But what if you don't just want an acceptable mix? What if you want a great mix? This is a test that I've engineered by sifting out all of the aggregate from our previous material and adding a bit more sand to it. As you can see, it's at least 50% sand or a little bit more to 50% silt and clay. And between the silt and clay, there's clearly more clay than there is silt. If I kept adding sand until the sand content was about 60 to 65%, this would essentially be a pretty much perfect adobe mixture. But it isn't safe to assume yet. 
Now that we know what our soil is made of, it's time to perform some more advanced tests by actually making some small simple things out of the soil, but that's for another video. Thank you for watching my video. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Digital transcripts of most of my videos as well as some other goodies are available on my Buy Me A Coffee donation page. Link is in the video description. If you think that sustainable development, earth building, and other appropriate technologies are as important as I do, then please consider donating whatever you can. It'll mean a lot to me and help me create more higher quality content. Thank you, have a great day, and remember to go outside and build something.